All right, let's roll in. This segment, this show, everything about this is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Now, all of this stuff you could have watched down at Tunica. At any of their five, soon to be six, fantastic sports books. Go check them out. The Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Sam's Town, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and opening soon, the sports book at the Fitz. We've actually seen all of these except for First Jackpot. That's right. But we will be checking that one out soon. We're recording Tuesday evening, Labor Day that. evening. We uh, went down. I it was a good my, time. I made my weekly picks. It was it was nice. Got some tickets. Uh, you can get more information on that at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. This is the college football starting 11. Now, just so you guys understand what's going on, we have a timer right here. We are giving two minutes to each topic. 11 topics, and we're just going to roll. We're going to see how this works. We're going to see how it goes. All right, you ready to jump in? Come on. Am I, are we doing draft, or are we just... You got it. I got this. You, All run, right. it, run it down. We'll talk about it. We'll jump on the first one. All right. The SEC went 13-1 and opening weekend. Yeah, they look really good. They look pretty good. Now, a bunch of teams played some high school teams. Let's not get too excited. Let, let's not go crazy. But Alabama beat Louisville 51-17. to LSU beat Miami 33-17. to Ole Miss beat Texas Tech 47 to 27. Auburn beat Washington 21 to 16. The only team that lost, Tennessee, got absolutely hammered on the scoreboard by West Virginia, which is the only place that really matters. But look, like Tennessee, there was a little bit of hope, right? Look, that's going to be one of the three best teams they're going to play all year. Yeah. West I mean, Virginia better than everybody but Georgia and Alabama. Yeah, they might be on par with Florida, South depending Carolina. on South Carolina, Florida, maybe. Like, we'll just see what those teams turn into. But both of them looked really good over the weekend. I'm going to tell you, that's, that might be the best offense that they play all year. Yeah, you might be right. Now, obviously, a lot can change. This was week one. West Virginia is fully healthy right now. I've been talking about it all off season. They got depth issues. They got depth issues. Yep. If, if some of those guys get hurt, but, man, they got some real deal talent. In that starting eleven, starting twenty two. Will Greer's no joint, no joke. No, you you got that right. They uh, SEC looked fine. SEC looked exactly how they were supposed to look. Even some uh, some unexpected wins, and that was nice. That's right. Ole Miss was an underdog. LSU was an underdog. Both outright wins. I and, like, and it. both kind of controlled the game the entire time. Yeah, that was the biggest thing. That's, that was that, like it's one thing to win; it's another thing to dominate all three phases of the game. What about, uh, did you watch any of the Alabama game? No, not one minute. The the two a cheat code deal, you didn't watch any of that. Not one second. You watched Michigan-Notre Dame. I watched Michigan-Notre Dame. I can Dame. understand that. We uh, we both had money on that. We both lost money on that. That's all right. Uh, but, yeah, it was, SEC looked fantastic. So, uh, we got that one in less than two minutes. Let's jump into the next one. Michigan's offensive line is still a problem. First assistant coach that should be fired this season, middle of the season, right now, today, Pep Hamilton. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of people that talked about how he should have been but, fired before but it's not the season his started, fault. though. Like, it's it's not just his fault. Whoa, now, like, he should have been fired. The scheming is his fault. That's I, his job. I'm with you on that, but, like, they've got an offensive line problem, and they've had that for a long time. A lot of like, teams have bad offensive line. You scheme around the talent you've got. I, I agree. They're I running agree. a very predictable offense, which is – Something that shocked me. I was not expecting this. They have a mobile quarterback. They have a guy that is not afraid to move and is not afraid to yeah, sling it. Get him and out of that And they're pocket. running, you know, first down, running second down, and then safe passing plays on third down. You, you're just not going to win big no. boy football games I, doing At that. first, I thought that Notre Dame's defensive line was just other world. Oh, my God, they're amazing. I totally missed this. I don't think it was that. That offensive line is just a swinging door. Now, and it's been like that for as long as I can remember, the last three, four years. Since Harbaugh's teams been there. Have, teams have had really good offenses and also had really bad offensive lines. This is this I, is not a, a – I, I, I totally put all of this on the offensive coordinator. I'm and the you. offensive line coach, you have to – listen, I played line, not that I played at any high level whatsoever. I stopped playing football as, as a sophomore in high school when I tore my knee up. Like that's – I'm not anything to brag about. 90% of offensive line is strength, it is technique, and then it's attitude. It's yeah. all mean, tough, rough, dirty play. And if you can't And those guys do ain't that, mean enough. No, if you can't be t – it's all mental. 
if you can't do that, you're just going to get blown up. It doesn't matter your talent level. You right about that? We got through that one? Heisman campaign's busted. Let's jump into the next one. First weekend. First freaking weekend. Bryce Love, all the hype, all the talk about how they were going to do different stuff with him. Completely done. San Diego State put the clamps down on that. He ain't the only one. We'll get to the other one here in a minute. Bryce Love, 18 carries for 29 yards against San Diego State. Bad. Three receptions for 18 yards. Really bad. No touchdowns. He was... He was unusable. Complete. Now, I, I'll say this. K.J. Costello might have jumped into the conversation. But do we really think, like, aside from Andrew Luck, like, this kid ain't Andrew Luck. We're so, not. I, like, no, Gary, the fact that it's week one and we're already having Heisman conversations I understand. is it, ridiculous. But that's what the hype had been about Bryce Love, right? Well, that's why you don't buy in the hype. Exactly. And so, the other guy, Arizona's Khalil Tate. Explain it. Did you watch any of this? This was a late game. I watched all the Pac-12 I, after dark. So did I. So did I. I watched this whole game. I cannot understand. He was 17 out of 34, 50%, 197 yards, one touchdown, eight runs, 14 yards, and a touchdown. Why eight would yard, Kevin Sumlin runs. not use your best weapon? Yeah. He's the best offensive player. Why he keep ran him the, in the pocket? Yeah, he ran the ball eight times. He's got to run the ball 20 times. This is why Kevin Sumlin got run out of College Station. I mean, it's not this exact reason, but, like, by God, you have a dominant weapon. Yeah. The best nice. playmaker on the field. And you're not going to use him? Yeah, I don't understand that. If, if, if he's not running the ball, maybe 20 is an exaggeration, but if he's not running the ball 12 to 15 times a game, then you're just not, you're not calling plays right. Yeah. You're he's not, the most you're not dangerous weapon to. you have. Like, I understand where he was coming from when he said he didn't want to play in the triple option because he didn't want to get hurt, but, like, Dude, your legs are what made you. Well, but like, you can run without playing triple option. Yeah. Very, very few quarterbacks are actually triple option quarterbacks that yeah. run the ball. Now, you're right. Oh, here we go. That is our timer. Number four. I talked about this a little bit earlier. Tua Tonga Valoa is as good as advertised. All the hype, all the praise that they threw on the Hawaiian. It was all legit. It was, it, a, it was a really good defense he played. It was all legit. It's really good. Let me just go on and tell you. Well, here's the difference. I mean, they might be 112th in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's top talent. He had six possessions, scored touchdowns on five of them. The other one, they had driven all the way down to the Louisville 17, and Devonta Smith fumbled the ball. They would have scored again. Jalen Hurts came in for four possessions, had to punt three times, kicked a field goal on another one. Why? Why are you talking bad about one of your quarterbacks? That here's I'm not talking well, bad that's about him. Exactly what you just did. I'm saying there is a difference here. Master Saban would be disappointed right now. He, yeah, he really would. He because you don't want to disrespect one of the quarterbacks, right? Because yeah, the depth chart is disrespectful, by the way. I get where he's coming from. He didn't want to disrespect, quote unquote, Jalen. Uh, there are ways to say it without having to be a jerk about it. Like, that's an easy way to say it. Tua played really well. He's going to be our starter. Jalen did some good things. We're still going to keep playing both of them. But that's dumb. That's – my guess is – That's dumb. Like, they will not play him in every game this year. That's my guess. I don't know that. Why would they play him in any game from now on? If they feel like his tool set can be utilized, his skill set, maybe. I, I don't is, have an answer for you. This is dumb. Like, if, if I'm Jalen Hurts, I'm probably like, like I want to be there for the team, but at the same time, like, hey, maybe don't play me in more than four games this year because I'm, I'm splitting in December. Next up, did you watch Oklahoma? Uh, a little bit. I was watching a lot of the Ole Miss game at this time. They so I had both of those games on. Yeah. I mean, they, I'm not watching blowouts, Gary. Let's just they, get down to uh, that. I'm not going to watch a team beat that. somebody by 40. There's nothing enjoyable about that. I will watch just to see what what they look like, right? I don't need to see what they look like against bad talent. I don't because it doesn't tell me anything. I can beat up a six year old. You don't need to see that to know that I'm good at anything. That doesn't mean I'm strong. Yeah, you're a good or a point. Good fighter. Kyler Murray, he did look legit. Nine out of eleven. It, look, he's not going to be 
otherworldly throwing the football the way Baker Mayfield was, right? That's just not how it's going to be. Uh, but it, Oklahoma, I think, is the class of the Big 12 again. Like I, Now, we'll see what happens with TCU, but... I'm Other not going to knock Oklahoma by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not grading somebody that played a high school team. I'm just not. I have no idea what they're capable of doing. Let's jump off that. Okay. Let's talk about a team that we thought was going to be a high school team, but wasn't. All right. Cole McDonald. You know who that is? Let me read you these numbers. 56 out of 78, that's 71.8%. 846 yards, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions, 19 runs for 82 yards, and two interceptions. This is the quarterback from Hawaii who was predicted to be one of the 10 worst teams in the country this year who now has a home win, a home blowout win over Navy and a road blowout win at Colorado State last week. Yeah, they're going to put up points. That is... Legit. Did you see uh, Nick uh, uh, Rolovich? Is that his, uh, that his name? No. The Hawaii's coach. He's uh, he's talking to like he's arguing with one of the uh, officials, right? And he puts his dukes up. Like they're kind of laughing. Like he's getting on him, but then he realizes, all right, I just need to go back to my corner. But he puts his dukes up like nineteen thirty style boxer, and he's he's ready to. And then they just walk off, and the refs laughing, right? Like this guy's got personality. That's good. If they are, if they're good this year, he is going to be an absolute household name. Listen, he's the guy that brings the Britney Spears impersonator and uh, and the Elvis impersonator to media days, like for the Mountain West media days. I mean, that you, you I, I think we need more. This is why I like all the coaches that are weird and quirky and not afraid to be themselves. The the coach speak is the most boring thing on the planet. Yes, all those coaches are really good. I don't care. I don't care. You're boring, and, and nobody wants that. This is why I this love is Mike Leach. This is why I love Gundy. I'm going to love this guy. And I'm going to tell you that you keep putting up 50, 60 a game. Oh, people are going to be talking. That's fun to watch. People are going to be talking. Let's uh, let's talk about Monday night's game. Virginia Tech, their beat down of Florida State, sets up an incredibly manageable schedule for them to win the ACC Coastal. I got I got two things I want to say about this. Number one, it's, is it no experience on defense, no, no problem? No, no, because there no. was no problem. <laughs> no, my number one is is I got bad eyes. I'm getting old, <laughs> and I thought that they were minus seven last week. That's yeah. If you watched the gambling podcast, you you saw that. And I was willing preview. to take them minus seven when they were plus seven. Minus seven was good. That's I was going to give the house 14 points. That's you got a – They were yeah. good. Secondly, the fact that they are preseason 20th in the country is everything that is wrong with preseason rankings whatsoever. And I don't know when Justin Fuente is going to get the credit that he deserves to be thrown in that next tier of coaches, that second tier, not not the tier that most people consider him at, but up there just under Urban and Nick – that guy's real. He's good. He's up there with Gary Patterson. He's up there with that next tier of highly, highly capable coaches. You don't want to go against one of his teams when they've got a couple of weeks to prepare. What about Bud Foster? Oh, well, Bud Foster is an, then, an it, icon, though. He's an he, absolute icon. And the best thing Fuente ever did was when he got there was he was like, you got to stay. Yeah. You got to stay. I need you. Like, I'll pay you whatever you need. Whatever you need. You're, we're, we're in this 50-50. He doesn't have an ego. He's not the guy that has to be king in the room. No, you're right about that. That's a great team. Not a good team, a great team. I caught so much hell for picking them to make the playoffs. Man, I don't know that they can beat Clemson or whoever else they would play in, in, the, in the championship game in the ACC, but I think they're dancing to the championship game in the ACC. Yeah, you might be right. Their, their schedule sets up real, real nice. I love this team. Let's, uh, let's jump into the next one. Another ACC Coastal team, Sunday night. The Bayou Bengals put a beat down on Miami. Yes, sir, we did. Is is this Georgia 2.0 for Mark Richt? No. What, no. Here's what I texted you and the guys from the Westlot Pirates podcast. I said, this is his third year. That is just enough time for him to destroy their weight program. That's what That was Georgia's problem for years. And now you see what Georgia can do under Kirby Smart because he understands how to build monsters. 
Mark Rick never figured out how to build monsters. And at Miami, they got pushed around the whole ball game. And I understand that LSU's got talent. I got that. Apparently you don't. Apparently you're getting no credit whatsoever to LSU for pushing them around. That's that no. is a that is a top ten defense that they pushed around. I'm with they you. They bullied but those guys around, and that defense went almost undefeated last year. That defense had a hell of a lot of turnover luck last year. They did not dominate on the lines except for against Duke and whoever, right, from the ACC. When it came time to, to throw down against Pitt, they got demolished on the line. They got demolished on the line against Clemson. Well, they got demolished Clemson's. by Wisconsin in the Orange Bowl. But before that, look, the Notre Dame game where they absolutely stomped Notre Dame, one, Notre Dame had been on a stretch of games that were forever. And I'm, st- I'm going to give them credit for that win because, by God, they came out and just took it to them. But a lot that of that Notre was Dame turnovers. offensive line was one of the best offensive lines in the country. It was and turnovers. They, them around. they got they turnovers. They caused turnovers. That's... We're just going to see this differently. <laughs> LSU beat their ass from beginning to end. Yes, they did. Top to bottom. And they took it to them. You're not taking this from me. <laughs> I'm not taking you it from you. spent all week trying to make me feel bad about a win. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm, I'm talking, talking about Mark Richt. I don't care. I'm talking about Mark Richt. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about thunderstorms. Oh, I don't want to talk about the weather. Well, I'm just... What are we supposed to do? Move college football back two weeks? I don't know. I don't know I how don't to remember fix it. it ever being like this. It's been no. like this for the last, like, three, four well, years. I was about to say, it's been like this for the last three, four years. I mean, was it like this in the 80s? I don't know. No. Was, there were very few games that got postponed or delayed. But I'm wondering if it's because we have, like, better technology now, right? Is that what it is? I have no idea. Like, Iowa State gets canceled. Nebraska gets canceled. Tell me this. This is how we're going to turn this into something. Do those games being canceled help or hurt Nebraska and Iowa State when they're playing? Nebraska hosts Colorado this no, they, week. they hurt both of them. They hurt both of them, and here's why. Every coach in the country will tell you the greatest distance of improvement is between game one and game two. Now, is that because there's a game or because no, it's remember, abs- they went it's abs- through? It's absolutely because it's a game. Well, because they, they went through all of the, the walkthrough, all that and stuff. None of that matters, prepped. though, Gary. None of that matters. Until okay. you actually hit somebody that's not your teammate, you don't know how you're going to react because you don't know what it's like to have somebody hit you back, even if it's a high school team. The most amount – every coach in college football history has always said the greatest – amount of improvement has always been from week one to week two. You get a whole game under your belt. The coaches get a game under their belt. The play calling, the cadence, everything about not just walking through it, but going through the entire game, actually playing through scenarios that you've practiced. They didn't get to do that. I absolutely think it's a monster favor for the teams that they have to play. Now, I don't think Nebraska's playing anybody this week, right? They're playing Colorado. Oh, and okay, that's a good game. That's a good game. Yep. And, and then, then Iowa, Iowa State's State. got Iowa. Yeah, they're which at Iowa. makes me Iowa. feel even better about that game. Yeah, I'm, it, that line's a little crazy. We'll get into that in the gambling picks. Uh, let's talk about, is Texas Tech awful on defense or, which we know the answer to that. That's a hypothetical. <laughs> a rhetorical. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say yeah, a rhetorical, but Got it. <laughs> uh, it. but but does does Ole Miss have a running game? Oh yeah, I think Ole Miss's offense is good. Scotty Phillips, I think Ole Miss's offense is really good. Jugo running back, sixteen rushes, two hundred and four yards, two touchdowns, and then of course they had three hundred and thirty, three hundred fifty whatever yards passing because uh, uh, Jordan Tamu was fantastic, unbelievable. A, yeah, both both of those things can be right. Both those things are right. I, I, I didn't Ole Miss think, has a good offense. I didn't think Texas Tech would – I think they would struggle to win three or four games. I yeah, don't we, think we already good. talked about that. Their non-conference schedule is difficult. They have Ole Miss. I picked them to lose to Ole Miss. They did. In a couple of weeks, they got Houston. I think they're going to lose that game. Houston's really good. Uh, well, maybe they're not good. They're supposed to be good at defense, so they can slow them down. Anyway, um, I – I think Ole Miss is the Texas Tech of the SEC. They're probably a little bit better than Texas Tech at all the phases, but I don't know that they're a lot better. They, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably. I think Ole Miss is good enough to be a seven and five ish team. Yeah. 
Uh, and they could go eight and four, six and six, something like that. With that kind of offense, they could upset somebody, and that would not shock me because I think they're going to be able to score on anybody. Uh, Keep keep an eye out for the over. Oh, in the in the well, all the games, but Alabama and Ole Miss. I'm telling you that Tide secondary didn't get tested much against Louisville. Look, Ole Miss is going to put everything on them. Oh yeah, everything. Every on receiver them. they have is six five and two hundred and forty. It pounds. just AJ Brown is the most ridiculous thing. No, I've they're ever they're, seen. they're incredible. If they stay healthy, they're going to score on everybody. Like people used to talk about Laquan Treadwell being like yeah. such a massive talent, and he was he was one receiver that they had that was great. AJ Brown is other world. Yeah, other world. All right, last one, number eleven. Cincinnati goes into UCLA and beats the Bruins 26 to 17. Now, Wilton Spate, the starting quarterback, did go out with an injury. I was about to say that they're, they're not playing with their starting quarterback and I don't know how much depth they have at that position anyway. I don't think that anyway. really matters. Come on, man, it matters. Your quarterback is the single most important position on the yeah, field. Yeah, but they at that point they had only scored 17 points. I mean, it, it like it wasn't much. They weren't they they had Less than no, I'm sorry. They had 306 yards of total offense, 306 for the game, and it's not like he got hurt in the first quarter. Like he got hurt, you know. What was it, third quarter? Yeah, but that, that's there's still a lot of football. I understand there. there's a lot of time. But I mean, that's when you make adjustments. What even you still, do in the second half is far more important than what you do in the first half. I agree with you. I was just utterly shocked because that quarterback battle. Went right down until you know last week, nah, just, like middle of last see, week. But this is this is where you're wrong, and all these coaches are going to start lying to everybody because everybody's afraid of the transfer, and so they're going to tell these guys like Saban told Jalen and 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 Chip obviously told this kid, "You're in this thing. You you've got a chance to be." I haven't made up my mind yet. Bull crap. Everybody in the world knows who's better. All the players know who's better, and you're just trying to. To coddle this kid along, you, you're patronizing them just so they don't transfer on you. The kid that came in and, and played. And that's garbage. The kid that came in and played is the future of the program. But he's he's, he's young. young. He's not ready. He's not experienced. Right. And I think that was the biggest thing, right? Like, he does what Chip Kelly wants out of an offense. Well, he recruited him. Yeah. But that, he does what he wants. Wilton Spate can't do that. And that's why this is going to be a, a strange, strange season. Whew. They got a tough test this week. You got that right. That was all 11 of them. I had another one on here about Les Miles and Steve Spurrier and Dos Equis commercials. That was good. That was a lot of fun. That's good. That was a lot of fun. All right, that's going to wrap up the college football starting 11 for week number one.